Charlie, do you know what I'm sick of? What? Going to petrol stations. Interesting, why? It's so much faff. The smell of the petrol, messing around with the pump, talking to people, and worst of all, consuming fossil fuels. Well, I think I've got a solution for you. I'm Charlie. I'm Josh. And today we're going to be talking about charging electric vehicles with solar panels, how it works, whether it's worth it, and potentially rescue Josh from any more petrol station visits. Thank you. And we're Sunsave. We offer the UK's first solar subscription, Sunsave Plus, which means you can switch to solar with no upfront cost. More on that later in the video. Right, Josh, my solution for you involves getting three things. An electric car, an electric car charger for your driveway, and solar panels for your roof. Fantastic, tell me more. So there are currently 1.3 million EVs in the UK, according to ZapMap in September of 2024. All these EV drivers are in one of three situations. The first situation is that they charge their car using public chargers, which can be expensive, they tend to be unreliable, they're often not working, they're often not available, and worst of all, they're using grid electricity, which we know can be pretty dirty. In fact, normally only about 40% of grid electricity is from renewable sources. Oof, I don't like any of that. Situation number two is that they have a charger on their driveway so they can charge privately, but they still use electricity from the grid. It's better, but I'm still not a fan. How about situation number three then, which is a charger on your driveway, charging privately, but you've got solar panels on the roof and you use solar energy to charge your car. I like it, tell me more. Still here? Hit the like button and subscribe. Well, you know the basics. Solar panels go up on your roof, the sun shines, they generate electricity, that goes into your house. If you have an EV charger with an EV plugged into it, it will just use whatever electricity is available at the time to charge the car. If your solar panels are generating electricity, it might use a bit of that, but generally speaking, if it's a normal EV charger, it will use mostly grid electricity. That sounds hunky-dory, but is there any way that I can guarantee that my car will only charge up on solar power? Because a lot of companies have been talking about me driving on sunshine, and that sounds marvellous. Yes, well, there is a way to do it. There are certain types of EV charger that are specifically solar chargers. And what they do is they have a bit of technology called a, a CT clamp or a current transformer clamp. And what it does is it keeps the charger switched off unless it can sense that your solar panels are generating electricity, at which point it turns on. Some other solar chargers use other technologies, but a CT clamp is the most common one. Clever. To clarify, when you have a solar EV charger, they tend to only draw electricity from your panels when they're producing excess electricity. So that's electricity that your house isn't using. When your solar panels aren't producing excess electricity, most CT clamps will keep firmly clamped on the charger, which means it won't charge at all, while some keep a relatively loose grasp, which means it still charges up on grid electricity, but slowly, so it's ready and waiting for when your solar panels are producing excess power. Hmm. And what if I just want to charge at night because I'm out during the day? Can I still drive on sunshine? You're really keen on driving on sunshine, aren't I you? I love to do it. Well, if you want to charge up at night time and you're really insistent on using solar energy, you could charge up using a battery, but we don't normally recommend that because it doesn't make financial sense, and I'll give more detail on that later. Charlie, I want a bit more detail. Let's say I've bought a standard 7 kilowatt charger for my EV. What the hell does that mean? Can I use it with solar panels? Yeah, it's pretty confusing. You might have a 6 kilowatt peak solar panel system, a 5 kilowatt hour battery, a 40 kilowatt hour EV battery, and a 7 kilowatt charger. It's, it's all very confusing. It's dizzying. If you have a 7 kilowatt charger, the kilowatts refers to the rate at which electricity flows through it, a bit like water pressure. In contrast, kilowatt hours refers to a quantity of electricity, a bit like water measured in gallons. So if you have a seven kilowatt charger, turn it on, it will draw power at a rate of seven kilowatts, and after an hour, it will have filled up your battery with seven kilowatt hours of electricity. Nice. What if my solar panel system can't charge it up that fast? So that's very common for a domestic solar panel system. It can't really match the, the kilowatt rating of a lot of EV chargers. And that is where the CT clamp on a solar charger comes in handy. A normal seven kilowatt hour EV charger is always gonna draw power at seven kilowatts. So when it's plugged into your car, it will probably just draw electricity from the grid because your solar panels aren't gonna match it. With a CT clamp, it actually reduces the power rating of your charger to align with what your panels are producing, which means it will never actually draw in grid electricity unless you tell it to. You've really sung the praises of solar EV charging, but I'm still a little bit on the fence. Can you tell me the main benefits? Yeah, well, the first one we've already touched on is uh, cutting down your carbon footprint. You worried about going to petrol stations and using fossil fuels. Uh, if you roughly charge up your battery with 80% solar energy throughout the year, you'll save about 250 kilograms of CO2 emissions. 
and that is on top of 1.5 tonnes of CO2 you'll save just from switching from a petrol car to an EV. Very nice. And what about number two? Big benefit number two is the money you'll save. According to our calculations, if you charge a car using solar instead of the grid, you'll save around £400 per year. And if you go from a petrol car to charging an EV with solar, we reckon you'll save about £1,000 per year. And there are also loads of smart tariffs and EV tariffs that are designed to help you optimise your charging and increase your savings. Lovely stuff. What about number three? Big benefit number three is your protection from energy price rises. So obviously if you switch from a petrol car to an EV, you're protected from spikes in fuel prices. But if you're charging an EV with solar panels, you will also go through any future energy price spikes relatively unscathed. Nice. Charlie, is it time to hear about Sunsafe Plus? I think so. Sunsafe Plus is the UK's first solar subscription and it is designed to unlock solar for millions of households in the UK. With Sunsafe Plus, you can switch to solar with no upfront costs. All you have to do is pay a fixed monthly fee for 20 years. And it does stay absolutely fixed. No sneaky price rises, so you are fully protected against inflation from energy bills. You will immediately start saving on your energy bills and you will also earn income for exporting excess electricity to the grid. And these combined savings could exceed your monthly payment to Sunsafe, which means you actually earn money each year despite paying a subscription. This means you don't have to wait years for payback, which is what most people have to do when they buy solar upfront. Your best in class solar and battery system will also be protected by the Sunsafe guarantee, which provides total peace of mind that your system will produce clean green electricity for the duration of your subscription without you having to raise a finger. The Sunsafe guarantee includes free replacement parts, including a battery and inverter, 24 seven monitoring and maintenance, comprehensive insurance provided by Aviva and downtime cover. Sunsafe Plus is built to be flexible, so you're in charge of your subscription. Therefore, you can make a full or partial early repayment at any point without incurring any fees, charges or penalties. You also legally own your system from day one, which means that you will earn 100% of the export income. We don't take a cut. Sunsafe Plus also doesn't require a roof lease or airspace lease, which have historically caused problems with mortgage providers in the past. To learn more about Sunsafe Plus, head to our website, sunsafe.energy. There you can read way more about a subscription, watch interviews with people who already have it and sign up yourself. Charlie, probably the trickiest question in this entire video, how many solar panels do I need to power my EV? What a horrible thing to ask me. I'm so sorry. Well, the answer is there isn't really a specific number. Uh, a solar EV charger is just designed to use whatever excess electricity your panels are producing, whether that's from five panels, 10 panels, or 50 panels. Let's say I'm one of those people who really likes specifics, and I am. Mm -hmm. Can you help me? Okay, so the average household electricity consumption per year in the UK is about 3,400 kilowatt hours, according to government data. So uh, in, if you live in the middle of the UK, you've got average solar irradiance, you typically need a 4.2 kilowatt peak system to cover your needs. And that is, let's say, 10 420 watt panels, although it does vary based on roof size, roof direction, all sorts of things. Okay, and what about if I add an EV? Well, an EV in the UK usually needs around 2,000 kilowatt hours of electricity each year. To cover that, you might need a 2.4 kilowatt peak system if you live in the middle of the UK. If we're sticking with our 420 watt panels, let's say six panels, which would be a 2.5 kilowatt peak system. In total, that is 16 panels or a 6.7 kilowatt peak system. Brilliant, thank you for the specifics. However, even if you have a solar panel system that produces more electricity than your house and car needs combined each year, that does not necessarily mean that your life will run on solar power. In the summer, you will probably produce far more electricity than you need, so your car will run on solar power and there might even be some excess that you can sell to the grid. In the winter, your solar panels won't be producing as much, you'll have to import from the grid and it means your car will probably mostly charge on electricity from the grid. That makes sense. What about if I only want to charge my car at night? You're jumping ahead, that's the next section. I'm so sorry. Charlie, what if I'm only charging my car at night? Good question. Uh, if you are driving your car to work in the day, you're at work all day, you come back in the evenings and maybe you plug in your electric car about 7 p.m., which is what a lot of people do, you won't really be charging your car on solar. Oh no, why is that? If you're charging your car at night, your solar panels aren't producing electricity. Maybe in the summer, in the middle of summer, 7 p.m., there might be a bit of power coming out of them, but generally speaking, no electricity at night from solar panels. If you have a battery and it's filled up on electricity from the solar panels throughout the day, you could, if you really wanted to, charge your car using the battery. 
but we don't normally recommend that for financial reasons. Lots of suppliers offer really good EV tariffs overnight for charging your EV off-peak. It makes way more sense to use that and charge from the grid and instead use your battery for your home. And I guess overnight grid electricity is typically greener as well. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So overnight grid charging is still a lot better for your carbon footprint than charging during peak times. Right, and if I'm only charging at night, I shouldn't get a big solar panel system. Is that right? That is wrong. Even if you're not using your solar panel system to charge your car directly because you're doing overnight charging, having an oversized solar and battery system is still an enormous financial advantage. We've done a whole video on why it's good to get an oversized system and we put the link in the video description. My next question, Charlie, is how long does it take to charge my EV with solar panels? I assume it takes a little bit longer than charging from the grid. Exactly, yeah. So if you're charging with a seven kilowatt charger and an average sized EV, it will take roughly about six hours to go from 20% to 80%. Wait, why am I not charging to 100%? Good spot. With EV batteries, charging up to 100% uh, normally degrades the battery a bit each time, so it's best to avoid doing it. On top of that, the length of time it takes to charge from 80% to 100% is normally about the same as it takes to charge from 20 to 80. Wow, okay, so it takes about six hours to charge my EV from the grid. How long does it take with solar panels? It's a bit tricky to give an exact answer in the case of solar charging because unlike the grid, Electricity produced from solar panels doesn't normally come at a consistent rate, but generally speaking, on a clear sunny day in the UK, it will take somewhere between 8 to 12 hours to charge up your car using solar panels. Okay, so a little bit longer than charging from the grid. Yeah, but worth it for the savings. Well, Josh, hopefully we've given you a clean green alternative to petrol powered cars and petrol stations. Yes, thank you for that. And while it all may seem very complicated, we promise that once you start the process of getting a solar panel system and an EV charger, there are plenty of companies out there with all the expertise required to set you up with the right equipment. Exactly. And if you want to know some of the best solar chargers on the market right now, along with the best EV tariffs you should be on, head to our website. We've got a really cool guide about solar charging. Uh, the link's in the description. On our website, you can also sign up for Sunsafe Plus, the UK's first solar subscription, and find out if you're eligible. And please, God, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos about solar panels. Until next time.